Hey, so this is what I do to make my coconut milk, my fresh coconut milk. So, I, uh, these were small, so I bought more than I needed. Um, I'm doing a batch of five coconuts. I might have to use like seven of them um, to get the amount of milk that I normally would. Uh, you know, cut them out of the, the netting. And uh, you'll need a strainer if you... If you want to keep the fresh coconut water, which is absolutely the best, um, you'll need a strainer and something to catch it. Um, you'll need a hammer. I just use my little hammer because it doesn't really take uh, too much force and then the, it's more localized pressure. Um, you also need a uh, glove that you don't mind getting wet. I have these heat proof. Uh, waterproof whatever um, gloves and they're a little padded so uh, they will help prevent some of the uh, I don't know it's like a reverberation when you hit hit the coconut and then it like oh, vibrates your hand um, so you want to have something to kind of protect it all right so we'll show you what I do Let's take the coconut it in hand and you don't want to hold it you want to just let it rest lightly and then your job is to hit but also then to kind of catch because um, if you're holding it tightly then you're gonna get all that um, force going through your hand and you don't need that all right so just hit it and it'll start to crack there's usually a line and just keep hitting um, and then open your water Ooh, look at it your water will come out through your strainer and then um, if it's in half you want to break it down some more because after this you're gonna take a butter knife and pry the meat from the shell um, and the smaller pieces uh, work easier so then I continue to I hold the inside lightly and then hit it and crack some of that up. And you see? Crack, and then I'll um, make sure that it, it goes into smaller pieces. Here we have my pieces. And then once I finish, I'm going to go sit down and get them out of the shell. One more thing um, about the coconut. To me, the fresher the coconut is, the harder it is to come out of its shell. Um, and I actually, this one was cracked about around there, and I actually pried this out by hand. So this tells me that it's uh, an older coconut. Uh, it's got a little spot on it. I'm gonna peel that. This one, I'm not gonna be able to peel it out. Um, this one probably won't use this entire thing came out on its own you see how it's starting to get mucky around the side um, I'll scrub it up and see if I can use it if not uh, that's why you buy extra coconuts because some of them you never know they all look the same but you never know when they're starting to get old so this is my strained coconut water um, I didn't put a cheesecloth or a cloth over my strainer so um, I got some little dusty bits in there and uh, I'll strain them out before I drink it. Also I learned from my very dear friend um, if you taste the coconut water as you're breaking the coconuts um, some may be sour some may be sweet um, that'll give you a sense of how your coconut is actually going to taste. All right, so now, now comes the time-consuming part. Um, I don't have to do anything with this one, uh, but I, I'm still probably gonna break it up. Um, let me take one like this. Having your glove on will help in case you slip and you won't stab yourself. Learn the hard way. So. 
take your coconut, stick your butter knife in the side, and just kind of wiggle and pry. And you get in deep enough, and you can lift. All I did was pull this way, and then I have to lift it out. This entire piece. So, little ones are where you get dangerous because you got to hold it. And, but hey, I'm getting lucky today. They come a good one out. Um, yeah, that looks like I did six, so I might do one more. We'll see. After, let me tell you, after this, um, some purists like to peel the brown part off. And that that is the super time consuming part. And you just peel it like a potato, a little harder. Um, I did a test batch after all the peeling because it literally took five hours to do. I think we had 15 coconuts. It took like five hours to get them done. Well, no, I was new then, but once you peel it, then you get the all white flesh. Um, I tested both peeled and unpeeled, um, and I choose to go unpeeled because uh, my time is valuable and it really doesn't make that much of a taste difference to me. Um, everybody still loves my coquito, so that's an executive decision I made. An executive decision I made that translates into more time for you, with your family, whatever you want to do, but also it's still fresh coconut milk and it's not coming from a can and it doesn't have any additives and you know stuff to make it thick or whatever. Um, fresh is best and even fresh with the uh, brown on it is still better than the canned stuff. I did see, um, uh, I can't remember if it was the Philippines, um, but how there's this uh, coconut shaver and you sit on it and you like go like this and it shaves all the inside out out of the actual shell and to me you're probably getting brown skin because once the shell is empty what's left right so i'm not the only one that uses the skin <laughs> Soundtrack is my go-to cooking music. The tips, they get hard to do. Let's see what this one's doing. It's so snug in there. It's also good to have a glove on because um, coconuts are full of their natural fat and um, touching them gets, gets slippery. Ooh, these is good. These are good. I love a good coconut where it's kind of effortless. Careful, they do fly. It's okay. Okay, so now that I got all the coconuts out of their shell, I'm just going to um, go ahead and give them a good rinse and get any of the fibers that may have 
landed on them all little nasty bits and pieces. And just use cool water because if you don't, the <coughs> the warm water will start to um, bring out the, the fat and the coconut. And you want to keep all of that inside for your drink. So the coconut that was a little mucky, I scrubbed them off. And now he's nice and whiter. Um, inside looks good, so we'll use him. Gotta rinse around. Usually I use my giant strainer. And there's enough room to, you know, like kind of move it around. But since this is a small strainer, I got a double set up over here and I'm just going to rinse and then put them in the other one. Nice clean coconut. And I'm stingy. I want every little tiny bit. That's it. Yeah. Pieces will fly off, and if you see them, grab them. See how tiny that is? But I want that. Alright. I'll just let them drip dry for a second while I set up. So normally, cut up the coconut, little pieces, and then put it in the blender with some hot water, and then strain it. Uh, today I'm going to try to use my food processor so that the shreds are even smaller, and we can maybe get a little more milk out of them. So I'm just cutting it so they fit down the chute. Sure. I expect it to be pretty loud. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Just give it and see. We'll see if it works. about one coconut. Turned out pretty good. Just a little tiny bit left on the top. Pull it out. And what do we got? I think that's about two cups worth of coconut meat. Shredded coconut meat. I can grab a measuring cup and see how that happens. Use this one. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it in here and measure it. I measure everything just because I want to know for next time what I did and what I had and how it turned out. Alright. So that is. Hmm. About three cups. Oop, my bad. About three cups worth of shredding. Um, in my blender I like to put four cups of the shredded coconut and three cups of hot water to make my uh, to make my coconut milk 
that will give you all of that liquid back. So I put in three cups of water and I get three cups of milk, sometimes a little bit more. All right, so here I have uh, four cups of shredded coconut. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, I processed mine differently so I can get finer shreds, because that's what I usually do. Um, so I got the food processor shredded ones down here, and I weighed them um, equal amounts. So you'll use six cups for my recipe. And then six cups of shreds to three cups of hot water. And if you can't fit six cups in your blender, just cut it in half, do three cups and one and a half cups of hot water. Pour that on top. Blend it up real good. You could also put your coconut chunks in here. Um, this is a really good blender, so it'll take care of that. Uh, if you have a blender that has an ice crusher um, attachment, or not attachment, but setting, you'll you'll want to make sure that you, um, you know, maybe use that to get it started uh, because you don't want to break your blender. So, turn that on. Let it go for like uh, maybe 20, 30 seconds. on what kind of blender you have it might take longer then you got this steamy frothiness here and we're gonna go over here and put it in our setup so what I have here is a it's not a cheesecloth it's a flour sack cloth um, I got it at Walmart it comes in a like a four pack or something like that cheesecloth the whole spread out when you squeeze so bits of coconut go through and it gets really messy so I've got a bowl to catch my liquid I've got a strainer to um, just to provide some stability because I'll press my mash against it <clears throat> and I found that this this works the best you can also get a nice heavy pot fold over your edges and press the pot onto there if you don't have really strong hands. So, pour all that in there. Then I'm gonna grab my heat proof gloves. Because you're messing with something that's nearly boiling. And you don't wanna burn yourself. <clears throat> so then you just Gather up your edges. You see the milk already coming through, but then we want to get all the goods. Squeeze it out. And there's your fresh coconut milk. <clears throat> Any dudes in the house, go ahead and have them do this step. My wife actually has stronger hands than I do. I believe. She does this better than I do. So, that's it. You can smell, you can just smell it in the air. Smell the fresh coconutness. If you smell this versus a can, you'll smell the tin from a can, you'll smell an additive or whatever. It doesn't smell just like So I put in three cups of water. I should get at least three cups out, if not more, because there is um, fat that has now been liquefied from the hot water, and so it might add to the volume of liquid coming out. But we'll check. We'll sit that down. <clears throat> Dump that out. And then I'll give you a measurement. <clears throat> Technical difficulties, no worries. Alright. 
a measuring cup. Excuse me. A measuring cup. And uh, nice and high. Alright. There we go. <coughs> So on here, you can see, oh, my bad, um, if we look at it level, it's a little bit more than three inches. Goodness gracious. <coughs> lift that up. Alright, so on here, look at it level, and it's just above, or right at three and a half cups. So we got a half cup of coconut fat, coconut essence, and then it looks like I'll do that um, another time, and then probably half an amount, so three, and then I'll measure. So just one, one thing that you want to be careful of is when you dump your coconut shavings, you want to make sure none of them get on the outside of the cloth, so I just kind of push it through and let it out and then put my cloth back in making sure that the shavings stay on the inside now if you like bits of coconut through your drinks you go right ahead and do it. be less careful but now we're good to go again for another round there we have it and I'll go proceed to mix up my coquito Three and a half quarts of milk out of those six coconuts.